we got a few good moves. Yes, yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Stephen J. Peak here, hosting uh, the next edition, uh, the third edition of the Alan Mans Moulders Gladiators of Sport here in 2016. Hope you enjoyed the first two shows. And we're looking to get bigger and better as we proceed through the football season. To my left, I have SEM 1116's very own Mr. Troy Zantak. Good afternoon, Troy. Good afternoon, Pete. Great to be here, mate. I'm really enjoying it. This is our fourth episode. Yep. And Possibly uh, our third. Yes. Good to see you over there, Phil. <laughs> yes, to my right, the managing director of uh, Alan Mance Moulders, uh, Mr. Philip Mance, who I think also it's the has uh, supplied us with this magnificent equipment here today and put it all together with electronic genius qualities to get us uh, on YouTube. Good on you, Phil. Uh, pleasure, and thank you very much. It uh, is the third, uh, I think, though, Troy. Some great music I'm hearing coming yes. into your uh, iPhone there, Phil. And it's got Peaky just doing, doing the, the bop <laughs> for Peaky Shuffle. Yep. John uh, Travolta. I was at oh. uh, the concert, uh, yeah, yes. not the recent one where he did the acoustic show, but I was at uh, Rod Lowe Arena two or three years ago uh, for a magnificent show that Prince did put on there yeah. at the time. I think it went three and a half hours. It might have gone four hours. I think he started at eight. He finished at midnight. Uh, Some 50, very sad news today, Peaky. Yeah, very sad news. Would have been a sweaty 50, night. 60 songs. Would have been uh, a sweaty night for you. Would have been a very sweaty night. In fact, I was on my feet. I didn't sit down once during four hours. I was on the feet the whole time. Mm. And uh, yeah. those of you who don't know, Prince passed away in the uh, um, most recent uh, half day in Minneapolis, USA, at his uh, musical compound in Minneapolis there. Uh, they weren't able to revive him. The coroner's involved. I don't believe any foul play. They believe, at this point in time, they carry out the autopsy and then find out the reasons for his death. But what a fantastic performer he was, a musician who could transcend soul, blues, pop and rock. No one's really done it his way. And he's been able to channel a lot of top quality performers in the past that he, he also learnt from into his own individualistic style. He was multifaceted, Peaky, mm -hmm. wasn't he? He could, he could sing the songs, he could write the songs, and uh, his list of intra instruments that he could play was quite extraordinary. Well, the main thing about it, gentlemen, is that he had worldwide support or worldwide fans that uh, transcend a lot of people who like Prince. Uh, you could go through a list of what they like and say someone else likes and Prince was the only one in their list they'd like because that's the type of performer he was because he could transcend uh, different age groups, different uh, uh, you know, income earning groups, different levels of society, you name it. He well, what about the other great loss this week? Yes. Bruce Mansfield yeah, yes. died this week of cancer. Just goes to show you if a man like us or a beast like him, <laughs> you should get checked out for prostate yeah. cancer. Yep. Uh, because you can, if they find it early enough, you can get over it. You can get but a great it. loss to uh What a great entertainer he was, a, a newsreader with, uh, with Channel O and Channel 10, 10. back in the day. Yep. He appeared on Channel 9, Nightline on 3AW was an institution yep. all around Australia. And uh, Bruce Mansfield, one of the, the all-time greats. No well, doubt about that. And also at night with uh, Philip Brady, that team, over 25 years, dominated... Late night radio, in fact, encapsulated 33% of the listening, nighttime listening audience into that one show. Mighty performance, and uh, that will leave a gap. With uh, Bruce gone, there's a, there's a gap oh, there already. Our studio audience has just arrived. Welcome. Oh, yes. <laughs> there we do. We have a member of our. Uh, now, we invite anybody audience. down to Liquid Black for our to be our studio audience, Troy. Absolutely. And Phil what's the address? Uh, 165 Ashworth Street, Middle Park. Now, where people are welcome to come down here and have now to a find it though. Coffee, of course, yes. with this magnificent liquid black coffee bean yeah. I have in my hands right here. Now, Hello, Delvin Delaney's in entered the studio. Made in Queensland, <laughs> you can see there in front of Troy. There, there's the coffee beans. You can take them home and brew your own coffee. Put it in the, the dispenser and the emulsifier and get yourself a beautifully home-brewed yeah. coffee. You can come down to Liquid Black, buy your coffee bags to do that, or Josh, the managing director of Liquid Black, will make you a coffee on the spot. That's Liquid Black Coffee, manufactured and grown here in Australia from pure coffee beans, pure recipes. Pure coffee beans. Pure coffee beans. Is there impure pure, ones? Pure, <laughs> and pure, pure so soil to grow it in. Soil. And it's all soil. working for you. Who, who are you, Kevin Hines now, eh? Yes, You've gone from Delvin Delaney to Kevin Hines. <laughs> no people now, people might say that Peaky's full of beans, yeah. Phil. We know what he's full of. Could well be. Soiled. And that's... Just remember, uh, could, could we just get on, can can get just on with it? Can I just mention, I mean, you did jump in and I, I was happy to do that with Bruce Mansfield, some of Hit's great songs, Hot Thing, Sign of the Times, Red Corvette, 
Cream, no, Bruce Mansfield didn't sing Red no, Corvette. No, I said Prince. Yeah. Raspberry Beret. I'll what about uh, 1999? Yep, 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 1999 and Sign of the Times. Probably, I'm not going to put anything in order. I haven't really sat down to go through the full list, but they're some of the great tracks. Purple that, Rain, the, probably. Purple Rain the in there as well. At, uh, great yeah. ballad, but to me, yeah, great. But, I mean, if you go back to the concert, what was the highlight of the night? He did a 10 or 12 minute version of Hot Thing, which was just absolutely brought the house down. Oh. I was you know, more than just standing up, I was jumping around to that. Is it going to be the name of your autobiography, is it? Hot Thing. Oh. Now he's in his Mercedes Benz. <laughs> it's, it's oh, actually, yes. In the no, new no, no, Garing staff car. It's not Hot Thing, it's Hot Thang. <laughs> <laughs> You've got you to get the pronunciation right, Phil. Hot, hot Thang. thang. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what it is. So we've covered that. Gentlemen, on to the issues. Oh, sorry, I had an accident. No, that there. was no, me. It's, right. it's okay. Um, now, uh, just let me get through our... Uh, we've got to do some house cleaning <laughs> at the moment. Mm. Philip here is the Managing Director of Alan Man's Mould is in Footscray, right. Melton, Backus, Mars. No, Quality, can... new and used Listen, cars tight, across the tight. spectrum. Listen, we can do that later. Yeah, no, but <laughs> I don't need to do, do it now. No, don't, don't worry about, about it. Seriously, Phil. Till the end, halfway. Phil, hey, mate, I didn't know that. Look, continue. The greatest no new and used car dealer... Everyone's fast-forwarding now. Get on with the football. Driving satisfaction. What about, what about Yellow Door? Yeah, I'll put yeah, Yellow Door. Okay, okay, Yellow Door breakfast, brunch and lunch in every eatery in Could Albert Park. Could so I ask that? I'm trying to get sponsors read out, and he's got his hand you on my You should have this memorised. If you're yeah. a true Footpark professional... Dining, in a house or courtyard, family and dog friendly. Dog take friendly. Take pick yep. and ch- take a chalkboard pick. at the back oh. of the children who wish to uh, imbibe in that pursuit. That's where you write your notes. I mentioned liquid black work, coffee. Of course, grown and manicured <laughs> coffee beans lead to salivation satisfaction at liquid black, and I'm mm. always coming back. Right. Uh, uh, Riccardo Stradoria, home cooked Italian cuisine from the recipes of aficionados oh, of the fine art of traditional Italian How cooking. Much food can Open this man all eat? weekend, yeah. lunch and dinner, special Sunday price lunch at Riccardo Stradoria, $29. $29 for this lunch. Is the info on channel. At Riccardo Stratoria in Albert Park, ladies right. and gentlemen. Right, I've got through the... Ho- Could the I just ask one yep. question that I did ask him on the phone last night? Yeah, you may do Seeing that. that Coles have got chickens on for $8 each, mm-hmm. how many do you eat per day? Coles have got chickens, what, $8 a chicken? For a whole, yeah, $8 a chicken. $8 for how many chickens? How many chickens, you chickens a day do you eat now? Chickens, $8 at Coles. I wouldn't... Look, I don't want to disrespect Coles, but I don't buy my chickens there. Don't you? No, no, I go to an independent... He goes to KFC. No, I don't. Ah. No, well, now, don't get me... Oh, I don't want to make any comment about that either because, you know... They, I've seen him knock over six Zinger burgers in a day. Fair That's income. not a bad effort. I don't even know what a Zinger burger is and he's saying I'm eating them. I don't mm. know what that but is. But hang on, you got most of it on the front of your top no, there I now. I apologise for that, but I did, I did have some... Uh, Look, Blake, it's nice night. to see you got dressed up for it. This is oh, why yeah. we always did radio or podcasts because... <laughs> so you didn't have to see this guy. Because he would come with yeah. three quarters of his lunch down his shirt. I had a... <laughs> I ate Japanese last night, right? I'll tell you what, you're sweating up an absolute <laughs> treat at the moment. I ate Japanese last night and I had the sukiyaki. Right? <laughs> you had the sooks. <laughs> no wonder you got a sore gut. <laughs> I had the edamame beans and some sukiyaki last oh. night, right? And the sukiyaki. And fortunately, You've some been of the, called a sukiyaki on many occasions <laughs> after it's killed a loss. Some of the juices in the sukiyaki, unfortunately... <laughs> Spilled onto this shirt. I, well, I do apologise. Well, now you're marinated in sukiyaki. <laughs> right, so get on with you. It's marinated. time. For, it's time, time for time to peak his issues. Issues. Thank you, Philip. And that's a good introduction. I like that. <laughs> now um, we've had another problem. Of, this week, <laughs> swimming's been on the news in more ways than one. And I mean, there's been some great. Leave news because, the poor bloke well, alone. I haven't started anyone yet. But Cameron McAvoy, what a great swimmer he is. In we could be looking at a Mark Spitz type performance at Rio if he improves just a fraction more. We could be looking at in three individual events, I think. You've got an incoming number. call then. I've got an incoming call, <laughs> thank you. That's, uh, that's, my, that's my friendly real estate agent. Now, if you need a good real estate agent, <laughs> Albert Park area, Greg Hocking is your man. That's Hocking Real Estate. Hocking Holdsworth Real Estate at Albert Park will get the deal done. Don't you worry about that. Oh, thank really? you, Troy. Now, that was actually the sheriff, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 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 oh. Oh. If you don't mind, umpire. So Cameron <laughs> McAvoy is going to be, he is a star already, and he's going great guns. But James Mangerson, I've already mentioned, I did mention this on 11.16 last night. What's happened to his career? I know he had a shoulder injury, but by golly, the guy who was the alpha male of 2012 and who was saying that he was unbeatable himself, making massive comments, talked the talk, but he couldn't walk the walk. And since then, he's had a shoulder operation. Maybe that slowed him up a little bit. He could not make an individual event in the Rio Olympics at 23 years of age when he should be in the purple patch part of his career. Philip and yep. Troy, the man couldn't make and a And what final. are some of the reasons behind this, Stephen? 
Well, the shoulder operation, Troy, might be part of it, but oh, we haven't heard from that. That tends to slow you down if you're a swimmer. <laughs> well, well it might, but he came into the Just trials. thinking, Phil. Just well, thinking. He's, he's it's had, not as though it's his, you know, it's well, his on. knee. He's had four years. I don't know when he had the shoulder operation, so at the moment we're not in a position, we're not medical experts, we're not in a position to say whether or not that affected him at the, at the trials, the Olympic trials, or not. We don't know. And we don't know. So, but uh, odds on, The disappointing Troy, thing is, is though, this. But it's got to be something happening, isn't it? Well, if, there's, if he went in there half-baked or under-baked or whatever he was, he has missed out on a spot. And well, in the 50 metres, well, not only did he get beaten by McAvoy, he got beaten by Matthew Abood. Abood has also taken over from him as well and pushed him into third spot, which, which cut him out of an individual pursuit. He's now a relay man only, um, Magnuson, a relay man. Now, and why has this stirred such emotion? Yeah, with you. Why? It stirred an emotion with me oh. because this man went to... Uh, London telling the world he was a world beater and no one was going to get near him. He, he spouted forth all over the place. He calls himself the missile and the alpha male. And then there was the muck up at the training camp where they upset the female swimmers. And we still don't know the, the, the full story behind that because the female swimmers were gagged for making a press conference, which is to me appalling you, in a democratic country. So you're saying, in essence, that his showboating has come back to bite him. Uh, back then, yes, when he was 19, uh, he unfortunately lacked maturity. Well, what about you when you were 19? Did you have any well, well, lack, well, well, lack of maturity? Yeah, well, see, Troy, let me tell you this. When I was 19, it doesn't matter what I was like at 19 because I wasn't, I wasn't using up government money, sponsors' money, or making my parents drive me to the pool at 5 in the morning for 10 years to train. I didn't do any of that. I, I, I went to school and, and played footy and cricket and did all those sorts of things and I went to university. So And I worked while I was there. So I didn't use up other people's money. So but does he get a government answer. grant? I didn't think most, well, unless AIS. they got into the AIS, so until they got into the team. That's when they yeah. Well, they all get they all get support, Philip. They have to because otherwise they'd be starving, hungry, right. and not able to get to training and all the rest of it. All getting uh, tra trained by coaches who must get paid. So right. uh, nothing is free, as we know. Nothing is free. Uh, that's Sorry. the position. Now the muck up at Manchester, and then go to the Olympic Games, and you get beat in your prime event, and you came second. Well, gee whiz. Well, it'll be interesting That's to see how good. they go in Rio because really the last Olympics was very poor. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a different team now. It's a different yeah, team. Different I team. just say so to concentrate on McAvoy and the success that, that uh, he's made of himself yeah. and the way he carries himself. I've, I've seen him interviewed yeah. many great. times and he's fantastic. He's got, yeah. a, got a great way about him and he's got a great sense of humour and he's yeah. humble. So, yeah. I, you know, I'd rather concentrate on those. Yeah. Those type of guys in our Australian swim team. Yeah, but I don't like to see wastage, Troy. You know, wastage in a career, wastage of uh, support, etc. Disappointment where it didn't have to be there. Now you're right. Okay, some 19 year olds are more immature than others. And the boy came out and said, "Look, I'm I come from the country. I'm, you know, if he had his time over again, he probably wouldn't have done some of the things he did. But if, if you don't realise when you're there at the time." Uh, that this is a one-in-a-lifetime situation. Luckily, with Olympic Games, if you keep yourself up and going, you can maybe, like Dawn Fraser made it to three, some of them, the horse riders, make it to five, the Roy Crofts, etc. Uh, you might be able to do it, but in some pursuits, you can't. So, I don't know, it's disappointing, but the, the boy's got to yeah. look at himself. Just as far as, as government can. funding, yeah. you're legal. Yeah. You're a legal man, yeah, as you, most yeah. people know. Okay. Yeah. Were you uh, were your uni fees paid in in the early 1970s? No, they they no. weren't. No, they weren't. No, no. no, no. We're Just thought we'd get that out there. Yeah, yeah get it yeah. out. Oh, there mine were. Off with the one the election. Yours were, were Phil. Yeah. No, you, you mine were. No, 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 no. I got them for free. Oh, you're free, did you? Yeah, yeah. my tertiary education was free. Was free uh, throughout the 70s because Whitlam brought in a policy that uh, that was we needed to have the country be making education available to all. Wage all income earning groups or all classes in society, and not just people who could afford to pay. Yeah. But in any event, I mean, th you know, you, you sort of thank your lucky stars I was there because I still had to work in the holidays. I still did part time jobs. Yeah, what were some what of the jobs you that you got up to? Oh, well, I was a labourer at the Sandown Racetrack. I, I did a labouring job down there, digging up the track from the 1200 metre mark to the winning post. Were you involved well, on your own? in, in Aggie, Aggie Pops? <laughs> yeah, Aggie yeah, Pops. Aggie Pops I planted, yeah. planted Aggie Pops in the track and. Uh, uh, various other layers of the soil and rock and all the rest of it that they put in the thing. So um, that's how you get your soil analysis from well, before I've, uh, about yeah, the well, coffee. You learn a bit, you do learn it's all making learn. sense to yeah, me now. Well, it Got should. It. And uh, also, uh, I yeah. was a... Um, a uh, you were a caterer product. at one stage, weren't you? I was you? in the... Uh, well, not just a caterer. I was, uh, he was yeah, neater. I was, I was a silver service, yeah. silver gloves, white gloves, silver service waiter. Silver gloves, white I was, service. <laughs> I was a okay. waiter. Where? At the Australia Club and a Parliament House... 
Uh, St Kilda uh, members, a room, Collingwood members, MCC. Collingwood boring, members, that's boring, impossible. Boring. I was down there, I was pouring beers. Were you partaking in some dubious activities? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. Although I did, there, there were some... Oh, there, there was, was a, a pause there, from, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, there was a breakaway group took oh. place at that point in time and uh, yeah. we started doing private functions, about four or five of us yeah. or whatever, and we, oh. we used to do it in our own style. Uh, which was like what they do. We used to go to this reception centre in Mooney Ponds, right? right. I've, just, I've just been handed a, a, a message yes. by our studio audience. Thank you very <laughs> yep. much to uh, Michael Cook. Yep. Uh, the Woolshed Bar at the Australia Bar, does that ring any bells? Uh, Australia Hotel. No, no, not Australia Hotel, Australia Club. No, I didn't work at yeah. the Woolshed Bar. The Australia Cookie, Club. you'll actually have to work on your uh, <laughs> messages <laughs> if you're going <laughs> to uh, <laughs> convey them to me. I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> Blue Oyster Bar, Police Academy type style. <laughs> really? <Yeah. laughs> there is a story Australia about club. that actually, Troy. Yeah. That we've we've covered the, quite yeah. a few times. We are we are let me, actually. Let me just uh, get back to the reception. Yeah, let's centre let's get back to the reception right? centre. <laughs> because what would happen is this: normally I'd be the job, I'd be the major head counter, right, for meals. You'd right. be a head counter, would you? <laughs> I was a head counter for meals, right? One for so you, one for me. One chef, for you, one for you. Head chef, say so Stephen, can you go and count the heads and tell me how many meals I've got to cook up, right? So I'd go out there. There'd be 20, 30 so, tables at 10, 300 or whatever. So, oh, that's yeah. 320, thanks. No, so what, what are you, you're heading down the right direction. So <laughs> your arithmetic <laughs> may have been a little Phil shaky. Under, Phil understands my arithmetic yeah. perfectly, actually. I'd go back. If there were six of us working, I'd go back and go, 307. Thank you much. <laughs> so we'd get the six, <laughs> everything they had, we had. So you'd get the six meals <laughs> in to make sure everyone got a, 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 each of the courses, nine courses taken. Uh, uh, you know, you're oh, salivating just yeah, thinking yeah, about this. Really, <laughs> these were, this wasn't just your standard fare. What you get these days, the, the appalling catering services you get. These was this days. a la carte? This was <laughs> a la carte, a la everything. But I can tell you this: it was uh, a la in the in my belly. One, just in case someone was a little bit hungry, they'd be able to pick off the seventh one, and you get a bit more. So. We used to get, <laughs> then we get a box. But you know, of, it was someone that other people wanted to pick on it. No, it was he of, ate two. Yeah, we get a box of beer, right? We get a box of beer, get a dozen bottles of beer, uh, and put that in a corner of the fridge. Right? Did you devise this scheme? <laughs> were I was, you? I was party to it. <laughs> I no, I want to know whether you were the mastermind of this. I wasn't, I wasn't the complete mastermind. This is, this is a, leader, a new leader. segment called Picky's Eating Habits. <laughs> I had a word to our team leader, oh. and uh, I said, mate, it's a hot night, and, you know... It's a hot night. And it looks like we're going <laughs> to be go. working. It's going to be a long night. We're here at 7 o'clock, 6.30. We're going to work till 1 a.m. I said, oh. you know, we're going to get hungry, and we're going to get very thirsty in these conditions, right? He said, I hear where you're coming from, Stephen. You're, you're, I'll make you the head count man for the food. I'll go and get uh, the box of beer, put that in the corner where uh, that's, that's our beer corner. Right? So ladies and gentlemen, that's in between courses, It is. In between it, courses. It's appalling behaviour. And, and apparently we're giving this poor swimmer a hard time, and... <laughs> You've been stealing things you can left, see, right, and you can center. see where those extra From meals poor, went. You know, at a, at a function that was probably raising money for some poor charity, <laughs> that was a or a 21st and or you've or a stolen everything at nineteen, and you're given this poor bloke an absolute shellacking <laughs> because he's tried his guts out, he's hurt his shoulder, and he can't swim. I will tell yeah. you what, it's yeah. just he's not had an operation. on. It's not on. Well, he's had a big operation. Yeah, he's had a big operation. So That's why he didn't do yeah, any good. It could have been 12 months ago, eight months ago. I don't know when the, the operation... Well, then, again, don't presume. And now you've got well, the... the he's, he's turned up to the trials. You're, well, either, you're either there or you're not there. Well, Maybe he was he thought, there, but he wasn't he was good enough. He was going to make the, re- the relay. But you're was trying to... You're, you're trying... You're trying to, to ascend to the moral high ground after yes. pilfering meals <laughs> and as Grok. a teenager. And Grok. This is outrageous. Yeah. I wasn't a t- I don't think I was a teenager. That was 1980, 1979, 80, 80, oh, well, 80, so. well, you're older, so you're old enough to know. Yeah, yeah. You, were, well, just, you were 40 well, we were in 19. We were of the view that, our, <laughs> that was a supplement. The devious our, mind of Stephen J. Uh, Peake, that ladies and gentlemen. That was a, a supplement, Troy. That's what that was. Look at you. A wage of You're sweating like Newman no, no, in Seinfeld no, no, at the no, moment. No, the owner of the premises, at one stage, he came into the fridge and he said, Boys, there's no one on the floor. Can we get someone out there? <laughs> <laughs> and we, we've all got a bottle of beer guzzling it. Because oh, it was a hot night, Troy. Like my, on, my, oh, hot. My dinner suit and shirt. If it was my, hot, it was okay. My dinner suit and shirt by about nine o'clock. I was, oh. I was, I, 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 Can I you imagine, Troy? It was like somebody oh, threw him in a now. swimming pool. We've, yeah. got, we've got one light now, dripping, ladies and gentlemen. I was about thinking about getting. Too, but not anymore. The man, you I need a towel. I was dripping, you know, back then. Again, another reason why we're only on the podcast and on SEN because <laughs> this is not good. Now, you couldn't do t- proper television, you'd die. No, no, uh, 
Well, if they had to put makeup on you, every ad break, oh, they'd have to come out and give it to you again. Yeah, yeah because I, I just get worked up and, uh, you know, hot blood, whatever you want to call it, you call it whatever you want. How is and the merc going in that department? Oh, Philip, man. Oh, Ladies Phil. It's put me in oh, no. this magnificent machine. I was actually talking the about the... best car I've ever had. Trying to get the, the, the female variety into the car because now you're out of the Goering staff <laughs> car, mm-hmm. which, by the way, I don't think ever started again which, once which you stopped it. I, what do I call performance uh, enhancers? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, is, is the Mercedes Benz now uh, in performance enhancing well, look, you with the female uh, gender? And you had it for six days. Yeah, well, you're but. Don Juan. Oh. Well, <laughs> well you reckon Really? You <laughs> I'm not Don Juan. Yeah, I thought you were a hot thing before. <laughs> Don Juan. Don Juan. Really? Yeah, Mate, you aren't Don Rickles, <laughs> let alone Don Juan. <laughs> Something rigor mortis was that saying? <laughs> <laughs> I can't I'll tell you what, Cookie, messages. your messages. <laughs> I can't read them. The studio audience needs a big board. I'm fogged up. <laughs> I'm all fogged up. So anyway, we've got another Olympic issue. There's a bit what? of condensation on your goggles. <laughs> 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 we've got another Olympic issue. What? Adam Scott, our famous golfer, right, who's our current number one golfer, yeah. he's spurning the Olympic Games, spurning them, oh. treating them with contempt. Really? Golf shouldn't be part of the Olympic Games. Correct. I'm sorry. Correct, uh, it so shouldn't be there. Phil, okay. Totally Cut and dry, okay. absolutely, I'm sorry. 100%. I don't know why it's in there. It's just, it shouldn't be there. Right? I mean, I've, I've always All you do, it's like the President's Cup now, because yeah. the same people that play the President, it's like a practice match. Yeah. So yeah. I just, it's but the like... the value is a gold medal. But the the same, and honestly, it's like tennis. And again, I love tennis. But I don't think that should be in the in the uh, Olympics well, either. I hope we've got this uh, the oh, blowing of the uh, proboscis. <laughs> Excuse me, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. <laughs> to carry out some ablutions there, whatever they call it. <laughs> Can we get a close up of that? Uh, I don't know. Lucky that we don't have a tennis, cameraman. Tennis and golf are two sports that don't need to be there. Because no, I agree. There's no amateurs there. They're all professional. They are. And that, and, well, isn't well, that the whole point? The complexity. I always took the Olympic Games to be. I don't expect to get purity. But I expect to get amateurs. You know, you know, you're always going to get a certain percentage who are going to take banned substances and they're going to, testing's going to find most of them out, right? That's been happening since been Jesus happening paid full black yeah, for Jerusalem. Adam, since, Adam since, Scott, since, since, he, since Methuselah was in short 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Adam Scott's been excoriated over this. Yes, I don't get it. You it's know, it's fine because, because, see, the, unfortunately, the general <laughs> public, the milieu, um, See that when you're called up to represent your country, all of those, they oh, just say you that don't you have drop to. everything it's and not, you do it. It's not compulsory. If you were called up, hypothetically, to represent Australia at chicken eating, eating, eating. would you would you partake? Would well, you what, would you what don the green and gold? No, well, it's no such thing as eating <laughs> in the Olympic Games. That is rubbish, Troy. That that in turn also it's, it's a poor. It's a poor type of joke in is the first place. Why? But the other thing is, is but that's what you're Olympic best at. I'm yeah. saying, Adam Scott. His profession is golf. Golf. Yeah. Your your best asset is what well, you're reading. Well, no, that's just not that, that's the it's, way it is. It's, it's, it's certainly not your Greco-Roman legal work. Wrestling is a sport. Uh, yes. Cookies back in action, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that was a very good message yeah, for Cookie. Thumbs they, up. Has that been removed from the Olympic no, Games, or no, is it no, still no. there? Yeah, no. I mean, I think it may have been wrestling removed. Wrestling's still going, isn't it? No, but Greco-Roman wrestling. Oh, Greco-Roman. Yeah, no, wrestling's still there. I don't think Greco-Roman well, I heard wrestling. someone call it Greco-Roman. Did you hear that? No, I did not. <laughs> Only <laughs> a I, cretin like you would call it Greco. Oh, no, I said I heard that, Troy. Yeah. I didn't say I said it. I said I heard that. Oh. Clean your ears I don't out. Not clean your ears out. <laughs> what about you cleaning your uh, windshield? <laughs> yeah, it's all right. Yeah. So we're at a dim about the soccer. Right, so the, sorry, the uh, Scott in the, the uh, goal. Adam Scott, we, well, we agree. We don't mind. Okay, Melbourne was deemed to be the sports champion of the world or the sports city right. of the decade. Can I just talk about with... football for a minute? You want to get on the footy straight away? Do you want to get rid well, of these other well, topics? Well, what are the other topics? Well, just hit us and then we'll say yes or no. Sports champion the world, that's all well and good to win these awards and all the rest oh. of it. And on the surface, it looks great. We've got a great sporting precinct. We do. Down at the uh, Flinders, what do they call it? Flinders Park and yep. uh, Westpac Centre, tennis, uh, uh, rugby. MCG. Soccer, MCG. Olympic cetera, Boulevard. Cetera. Now, that yep. all looks fantastic yep. on the top and, yep. and the elite sportsmen and women get looked after. They get yep. to use these facilities all the time. But you know through my own experience that the underbelly of all that, the undercurrent, of the whole situation is that councils and a lot of these precincts don't let uh, second or third tier uh, groups of people in these in the same sports onto that territory right. in, to protect surface and grounds. True. Right? So here we are, our society is becoming obese through lack of exercise, and councils in particular 
They're, they're helping that along all right. They're helping people get obese. Uh, won't let them onto grounds up and down the coastline. You know where I'm coming from, gentlemen? Yes. Uh, all over the place because no, you can't, that's got to be protected. You take sanding on footy ground, you get used about six hours a week. Another 170 hours, not used. And they say, well, we've got to protect the surface of these The grounds. sunshine. Why? The grass. Why? Why? The grass. Yeah, well, so, so what if there's a, uh, the grass is so a bit scrappy on Saturday? Get a oh, roller out and roll it smooth. Right? Well, that's terrific. Yeah. yeah. Uh, injuries wouldn't increase. What, what, if the grounds what, were substandard, mm, I think they might. Uh, how, how do injuries increase on a flat surface, Troy? Tell me how that Oh, happens. it gets muddied up. Well, you're saying Dagged to up. have consist saying consistent it, yeah, use. usage of, I want to see two, 3,000 people use those grounds during the week so that a primary school of kids uh, it, where the parents are scrapping to put dollars together, can't afford to send them to Brighton Grammar down there or those schools, uh, can those kids can play their football? On you know those nothing about certainly. maintenance maintenance of grounds. No, so Troy, I do. I do. I do. I do no because idea. there's an elitism. There is an elitism in in, in, this, in this state. It's common a sense. Elitism. No, it's, it's not common sense, Troy. It there is, is an elitism. Common sense, Phil. What's the common sense? That you can't use these grounds for more than six hours a week to protect them for the next game next weekend. Well, it's a second that tier is, That is a massive underuse of facilities that, that I can't believe. Even the MCG gets used once a week. That in itself also, Melbourne should be allowed to train on that ground during the week, just yeah. like they used to be in the 60s, 50s, 40s and that, 70s. That is the comment of an ignoramus. Well, that is, well, Troy, you can have it any way you want to. <laughs> I believe in a full and economic use of facilities at all times. Right. Now, if someone injures themselves and they find something wrong with the surface... They can sue that, you. They can sue they, you. Well, let's see if they can prove their case. You know, we knew that Waverley had problems. It always had problems because what they were doing was substituting... Well, you can't trade ground. on Etihad. If, you have, if you've ever had the privilege of walking on Etihad yeah, Stadium... Yeah. Why can't you train on it? It is so wet... During the Wet. winter, oh, it's a, the winter. It, okay, like okay. So even around the boundary line, ground. it's not proper grass; it's mat, because the grass will not grow next, mud at school. next to the fence. Do you want to yeah. see our elite athletes running onto Eddie had the MCG, Kidinia Park, Subiaco, with with the with the grass coming up, just tufts of grass coming up? Tufts of grass. No, I said roll the ground on the Friday before the weekend's games. You roll. Yeah, that's what the curator's meant to be using his skills to sort it out. The curator's not a magician. Lazy. Well, no. laziness. Laziness. Just, just don't let anyone laziness. on Laziness. No, they can roll it. It's not expensive to get a roller and roll them and get them sorted out before the weekend's games. But we've got to start to maximise well, the they, why why facilities well, why don't and they get play at playing more sport on these grounds. Play at Flemington or Sandown. Plenty of grass there. No, no, they no, hardly no, use it all there. Uh, Philip, have you walked on a racetrack after horses have been running on that's where you will break an ankle because they, you've got 550 kilos pumping into the ground. What's the difference? So if you had 2,000 people running on the pitch... So you're all weighing you reckon, between 60 and 90 kilos. What, do you reckon that wouldn't chop it up a bit? So you've just well, destroyed in, in your argument. It hasn't destroyed anything. Can we move on? People don't make the same indentations as horses. You've only got it down. 2,000 pe two people might, though. And a human being weighs between 60 and 100 kilos. Pinball machine says game over, Phil. <laughs> ding, ding. Yeah, Next. Well... well Perhaps you, the members of the public, hearing what I'm saying, would like to send me emails uh, yep. at peak at netspace.net.au. Yes, send absolutely. Them through, and I'll send read them. them out next week. And okay. Send them through. Or, or put, put it on, on the uh, YouTube. YouTube. Yeah, put the it comment. on YouTube. I'll bring it up. Do you want to see uh, the members of yes. the public? Yep. I'm now supporting you, the members of the public, that often I'm critical of you, but I'm supporting often. you on this. What about often. every time? Yeah. Do you want Not to see... Time. Do Not you want time. to see... The question is, do Not you want time. to see more games played on the best grounds in Australia? Do you want more traffic on those finely manicured yeah, yeah, grounds? And that traffic, ladies and gentlemen, is your children who don't get to train on proper facilities but are stuck in the cement courtyard of the primary school. Would you like your kids to train on Werribee football ground? Uh, Sandringham. Richmond, Punt Road. Sandringham football ground. Uh, and these other grounds that are controlled by councils and who don't let people on them during the week. Footscray. Footscray is another one. The Western Oval. Get oh. them on there. Use the facilities. The community facilities. The community, the government owns the facilities. You need to write to your local councillor and your state politician and put pressure on and get yourself Mate, onto these grounds with your I children. reckon he could run for state politics. I could. I don't think there's any doubt about that. In fact, if there's any... Um, 
Peaky for president. Members of, uh, if people are happy with those policies, are there. I'm thinking of a lot of public I'm talking support. about the elite grounds. I'm talking about the MCG, Eddie Head Stadium, yeah, Amy yeah. Park. MCG. I'm talking about those Amy grounds. Amy Park. No one's I'm not talking about local. I'm not talking about local grounds. Well, specify what you mean. You know, uh, I did three times. I don't think you did try because you're not problems. listening. Because listening. all you're listening. interested in is your counter-argument. You don't yeah. actually absorb what everybody yeah. else when is did saying. I say, when did I say the public playing the MCG? I never said that. I said Melbourne should be training on the MCG. Yeah. And I never said the public. I and said you Melbourne. heard what I said, didn't you? Well, you said overuse that. Overuse of that ground. Gonna, so that's overuse of Melbourne being on there six hours a week on the MCG okay. and you're can, worried about that. Can I time? I'm not worried about that at Next. all. It's all about economic usage. You need right. to listen right. to Go. what has been said. Next. Troy, if anyone breaks their ankle or gets injured in a situation like that, I'll just cut lawyers, it out so you can talk all your life. Lawyers there to uh, take legal action if they get injured, and it's to blame for the surface. There's right. coverage everywhere. Next. Now Spurs are in uh, in trouble in racing, Philip and Troy. Spurs. Spurs. There's been. Uh, You're going all right in the APL. Yeah, I was going to say, you're talking about soccer the, or all the table at the moment. Well, your racing spurs we're talking about here that oh. uh, that enforce the boot around the ankle of the jockey. Yeah, is, why? Is under criticism as being, some critics have said that jockeys are now overusing the spurs oh. because they've been restricted with the use of the whip. Honestly, you've got a 500 kilo wild animal underneath you. <laughs> you do have to have a certain amount of control to steer it in the general direction of what you want to do with it. So, and it, you need it to go in a certain way because otherwise it will just go the way it wants to go whether you're on top of it or not. Because a 50 kilogram little man, honestly, if the horse doesn't want to do what it wants to do, it will mm. just go left or right. It will make no difference to what the bloke on top's doing it. He does need a certain amount of control it's to... Steer the horse in the general direction that he wants it to go, not what it wants well, to go. Well, they have cra yeah. cracked down on whip use. Which is fine. Which is fan oh, I think yeah. it's fantastic. Well, yeah. I, I believe that the restrictions on the whip have been too restrictive now. It's five times before the 100 metre mark. That, to me, is, you know, you get an unruly animal like you, you had with the, the Queen's horse in the Queen's Cup last year, Bold Sniper. Uh, that jockey... He, he, he knew he couldn't use the whip. That horse ran off the track. If he had been well, able to use the whip, he could exactly have my back, point, back right? into the race. Exactly right? my point. If you have to use the whip because the animal is uncontrollable, unruly, unruly, yeah. then you have to use it, right? In the end, all yeah, these, that, unfortunately, Phil. it is, yeah. unfortunately, all yeah. these people are, are just picking at it, in my opinion, yep. is the fact that they don't want us to have horse racing, dog racing, trots, anything that's involved an animal. Yeah. Uh, they don't want to do it, and they will just come up, keep coming up with more and more uh, the things racing against it. Employs so many people well, even, in this country, even worldwide. So, if you didn't have this industry, the man there would be hardly any horses. And the people that are involved to a man and a woman yep. in the racing industry love their love their horses. Oh, absolutely. Honestly, Would you agree with you, that, Stephen? Yeah, yeah they, they, they do. They, the people involved in the whole profession, the industry itself, are horse people. They, of course they are. They're positive, very positive, helpful uh, people involved in the industry. It's very rare to get anybody who's otherwise. Uh, we've had a couple of instances of some uh, uh, cruelty cases, but oh. there have been of people who haven't been in the industry. And how many the people stuck the minority, hand up. Stephen. How many, the minority. But even lately, there's a poor bloke had all those horses only a couple of weeks ago. Mm. How many people put their hand up and said, I'll take 10, I'll take 5? Yeah, yeah. well, what get are the owners to... doing with those? What, 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 do they, what were the owners doing? See, at the same time that yeah, no. person got charged, the owners should have been charged as well. Well, he, no, I don't know do? if he owned it. He owned them all or not. If, yeah, if they're on the district, we don't know. But even so, everybody stuck their hand up and said, I'll Take a couple. I'll take. Go nurse yeah, them back yeah. to health because they love the animals. Horse is correct, and that's what. Do, well, then do. let's ban dogs. Yeah, yeah, cats. Well, we send them to right. Jim Carner schools and the dumping schools for kids and uh, whatever uh, eventing after. And the police force take on race horses as well, so yep. that all takes place. Right. Look, there's another solution there. Perhaps with the with the way that the spurs are made, they're made out of iron or whatever. You could oh, rubberize no. them, maybe. I mean, they could still have hard rubber uh, if they're a bit concerned. But look, the chief. Australian CEO Peter McGoran, a well-educated young man, Peter McGoran, and a former politician, 
uh, says most of the, when they do dig in, most of it, because they're riding the horse so high in the saddle, most of it's going into the leather of the saddle anyway. So all right. Okay, now we've there. got to move on to football because we've, we've had enough. That. We've had enough of all that. You don't want to talk about uh, the, uh, no. the the cricket, uh, the, the twilight You'll cricket. You'll have to uh, wait till next, next week. week. Okay. Well, now the I'm only thing I want to talk about the football, Troy, quickly, yes, Phil, yes. is the grand final, no replay. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Do you uh, agree? Golden or point, do golden you, goal. Yeah, what do you, well, what would you, do you agree? Well, for starters, do you agree? Sorry, I was distracted by some uh, tomfoolery yes. from the big fella <laughs> over tomfoolery? there. Tomfoolery, I lost my, now, I, had to I lost my debt all, sorry, um, ladies and gentlemen. Debt all. Yeah, um, you better pick it up, because from where I'm standing, you need it. <laughs> so um, hurry up. I'm just so, sorry, do you think it should be, listen. Yeah, you, you speak on, yeah. I might need to hold that, I reckon. Uh, I might need to mute it. <laughs> there you go. I think How's that's that? better. Thanks. Well done. Well done, Philip. Okay, so, yeah, do you, do you think we should have a replay or golden goal or golden point? Troy. I would like to see, after a lot of thought put into this film, yep. golden goal. Golden goal. I'd love to see a golden goal. So the if you kick the point, it didn't count. You've just got to keep going. Got to be a golden goal. The excitement that that would create right. would be absolutely okay. frenzy-like. Well, Peak? Well, that, means that, that that could well increase the game by an extra quarter, actually, waiting for someone to kick a goal could be. In, a, in a defensive-type game. Well, not like I mean, tennis. They play. Well, got to be win by two. They can go for an hour. We've been playing grand finals since, well, in the current system, I think since 1920-something or 25 or something like that, right? Because you could challenge before, then you could challenge the team that was deemed to be premier. The team that finished on top of that could have a challenge and have a second game the next week. So the the, uh, the current system has been in play since about the early 20s. How many draws have we had in grand finals? We've had three, I think, overall. No, three, right. three in nearly 100 years. That's one every 33 and a third years, and we're worried about uh, playing an extra game. We're worried about playing an extra game the next week or whatever. So you'd like to see it? Really I just think the rules stay the same. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. I don't have a problem with that at all. I just think that having to think up how you go about it, five minutes this way, five minutes that way, uh, you know, where's the wind blowing? I think Goddard pointed that out. What happens if you know, there's a gale force wind oh, you know, and, the, pl- and the, uh, the, the first team gets the... What are they, who, how do they pick the ends? Is it if you're kicking the punt road in in the last quarter, do you get the MCG in the, for the start of the fifth quarter or do you get the punt road in? How do they work all that out? Do they toss a coin again? Or whatever. To me, it is, it's, it, it is hip nerve reaction to pressure from the part of society which needs constant and instant satisfaction and gratification a at the point of a pin. A message, oh, a message coming Cookie through from our listening audience now. DuPont. DuPont. Unfair in a national oh. competition. DuPont. How did you get <laughs> DuPont out of unfair, unfair in a national in competition? Unfair in a national competition. What's unfair? It, well, I believe what's fair is a replay game. What is... Uh, unfair is going to uh, a team who could end up kicking, you know, against a gale force win and got no hope. No, ho- no hope. no hope. No, no hope. Against a gale force win. <laughs> Hang on. What? Yeah. A gale force. A gale force win. So it just whips up. It, it could. Ha- it could happen. Nowhere. It could happen in, in nature. Mother Nature can whip up a gale force win before you can blink. You're whipping up. Uh, a tsunami of nonsense at the moment. Well, well no, Troy. No, no, what I'm looking at is trying to, to keep the situation as fair as possible for both teams. And what we want is 100% fairness. This, this new rule doesn't guarantee that at all. Yeah, it doesn't mate. guarantee it. And I there's going to be I've some... I've got to say in the NRL, I, I like it. I, I, I like that, the thrill of that golden point. Yes. But in the AFL, I think it needs to be a golden goal. goal. Okay. So, so this is the, this is the point, difference. In the, in the in the NRL, yeah, yeah. And the AFL's going to be. This is what separates me from a these point. people. Oh, goal. Goal. What separates me from those people is I don't need instant gratification. I don't need instant satisfaction, Philip. Don't you? No, I don't. Well, enough. I'm you know, sure. Really, yeah. enough of your private life. Yeah. We're, we're <laughs> I'm, here I'm to happy. Talk sport. I'm happy to go back next week and see another game. But Are you? After yep. you've eaten a whole chicken, that's sort of instant gratification. <laughs> Well, that takes time. At, you took it the next one and go. No, well, I don't eat a whole chicken. You get, you know, normally a roasted half chicken with my vegetables. What was like. that? What was that thing that you spilt down the front of your shirt last night? Sukiyaki. Sukiyaki. <laughs> I think that could be, aka Stephen J. Peake, aka Sukiyaki. 
The, unfortunately, some of the sukiyaki just I couldn't quite get it into my mouth and it spilt down there. The juice, the juices of the sukiyaki. I think we should just go back to the podcast. No, I don't think that at all. Now, gentlemen, uh, there's a big game on tonight at the MCG starting at 7:50 p.m. I Hawthorne v Adelaide in a in a, a massive game mm, and a very game. interesting game at that because Hawthorne have been playing football at a rate not. Equivalent to what they've generally presented in the last three years, oh, and right. Adelaide at the moment are on fire. So, oh. gentlemen, Troy, you know, what are you? Who's your pick? Adelaide are playing beautifully at the moment. The Hawks just getting home against the Saints. Great effort by the Saints oh, last good. week. But uh, look, I'm looking at Adelaide upsetting the Hawks by one to two goals. Phil, I think it's going to be a Titanic struggle. All right. Philip, no, I'm going to go with the Hawks. I think that they're just starting to hit their straps. And uh, Adelaide, again, playing excellently. But I think the Hawks by three goals. With the Hawks, two very good ins, Gibson and Hill. Yes. So yep. Yep. they're very good ins. Right. And they came in uh, Litherland and Howe went out for those boys. Uh, Daniel Howe, another beautifully educated young boy. Now you seeing it uh, pan out, Yeah, Steve. I'm going to mention that when I tell you that uh, Cameron's in for Adelaide and out goes Malera with a quad. Are you aware uh, of the work of Charlie the- Cameron? Charlie Cameron, I don't know a great deal about him, but he's a, he's a, he's a, a very will-of-the-wisp half-forward flanker. Okay. Will-of-the-wisp type. Philip? Will yeah, okay. will-of-the-wisp. Hawthorne, $1.42, Adelaide at two eighty five. okay? No, no, who are you picking? Uh, I'm picking Adelaide to win by two goals in right. that game. Gee, that's okay. not... Uh, uh, I well, believe that they're... I think you agree with me then, Philip. I did agree with I Troy. you may have, Troy. Uh, and that oh, just, well. just goes to show that... Uh, that well, well. Show. Uh, my mind... I think I might have to change my selection. Very here. democratic... Mindset I have to issues in sport. Very democratic. Did you say autocratic? Or no, I said democratic, Troy. I said you. democratic. Let's Thank get that to correct. Now, right. Sydney Thanks. are playing West Coast. Sydney, uh, there are $1.62 and uh, West Coast $2.30. This game has been played at none other than the Sydney Cricket Ground. Of course, they've moved away from that other mess that they call uh, Hindmarsh Stadium or something or other, whatever it is. Hindmarsh Stadium. <laughs> is it Hindmarsh Stadium or is it... I don't believe so. Fine, Marshall. This was the expert on grounds before. <laughs> uh, the ANZ Stadium. ANZ Stadium, but it had another name. It certainly wasn't Hindmarsh. <laughs> well, I think it was. They played their games at Homebush, Peaky. Was it Homebush, is yeah. it? So it's Homebush, not Hindmarsh. So I was close. Started with a H. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, well, the I was very were. close. Yeah, the Olympics were there. Of course they were there. Yeah, now what In comes Hewitt and the Sinclair. That's Callum Sinclair, the former West Coast Ruckman there for Sydney. And out go Towers and then Curvis. In for West Coast is Prittis. Wellingham and McInnes, and out goes Lysette, foolishly uh, suspend, or suspended for foolish activity last week. Nelson and Hutchings. Troy. Troy? Yeah, another great game, Peaky. I'm mm. tipping an upset here. I think the West Coast could get over the line at uh, the SCG. Gee. Oh, it's a fortress there. I tip the West Coast to win the flag, Phil. Did you? Sure. So sticking oh, with oh, it. Yes. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And the big in there, Matthew Prittis. Yeah, yeah that's a massive in, yeah. All right. no, I'm, I'm still going to go Philip. with Sydney. Uh, still think they're still playing pretty well. Uh, I reckon two goals. I think those odds, Philip, do reflect the position of this game. I think the West Coast might just find the pinch. They've got to fly across the countryside. I know they get used to that now, but... Uh, it's at a fortress there, the Sydney Cricket Ground. Uh, they Sydney play their best football there. They know the ground back to front, and Franklin is averaging four goals a week. If he keeps that going and he plays finals, he's a century goal kicker this year. Of course, right. everything's got to fall so into line. Sydney crazy. by two goals oh, for mine. Dude, Gold, yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Wow. Gold Coast v North Melbourne at the Metricon Stadium on the Gold Coast there tomorrow at 4.35 p.m. I. Gold Coast $3.50, North Melbourne $1.30 in for the Gold Coast. Curry. Grant, Russell, McKenzie, and Wright, that's that's Jared Grant. Out goes Davis rested. Why would you rest someone this time of year? They're pretty early. May suspended, and rightfully so. Uh, Prestia is ill, and Nichols and Brooksby, Brooksby have been uh, dropped, and no change to the North Melbourne lineup. Troy? In a nutshell, North absolutely on fire at the moment. Yep. Uh, Jared Waite playing some of the best football of his career. Goldstein outstanding. Jack Zebel in scintillating touch last week. The Kangas by five goals. Five goals? All right. Yeah. I think Gold Coast have been playing pretty well. I don't think they'll win, but I think it'll be three goals North North. And May out's a big out he for is. them. Yep. Yeah, and deservedly so. Very fortunate that he just got the five, and actually, North for North that North attack. Top, 
at the moment the only undefeated team. Uh, yeah, in the correct, league. and they'll stay that way because they will uh, effectively take care of Gold Coast at this point. A bit unsettled when you've got five changes and you're a, a young growing side that can upset the Apple Cup. But they've got Hall yeah. on fire, number 33. Then they've got a full forward who's another potential 100 goal kicker this year in uh, Lynch. Tom Lynch. He's um, you know, on fire, He's absolutely on, on fire. On top of the, uh, so the Colvin at the moment. Uh, Three to five goals in North Melbourne. Right. Yeah, they're a rock-solid team now. They're match-hardened. They've got a lot of experience, strong in the body, and, and did the right thing. Picked up another guy like Farron Ray from St Kilda to add to their arsenal for the uh, final series. Western Bulldogs will be the Brisbane Lions then. That's at the Etihad Stadium tomorrow at 7.25pm. They're in for the Western Bulldogs as Wood, Campbell, Dixon and Dale. And here go Hannison with a hamstring. Hamling. Uh, Boyd has got a shoulder and uh, McLean's rested. In for Brisbane as Rockcliffe, and out goes Mays. So, uh, Troy. Troy. Yeah, the Western Bulldogs are absolutely on fire. They're few uh, injuries, though, each week. Few injuries, yeah. That's and, and Joe, Hannons, Joe Hannonson's the big one. Yeah, that's yeah. the big one. That's a massive loss. Huge. But uh, I like the in of, uh, of Dixon. He's a goal kicker. Mm. And uh, Easton Wood right. to captain the, uh, the Bulldogs for the first time. Look, I think they should get over the line by six to eight goals. Quite. <laughs> Philip. Uh, at Eddie Head. At Eddie Head, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I think they'll win, but if they get too many more um, injuries, Troy, I think they're going to start to struggle because I think they've been flying, but I still think they'll win, but three. I believe the, the Bulldogs will win, but this is going to be no walk in the park. And you're right, Philip, that uh, once you start getting injuries week by week and they're, they're hitting some fairly top-level personnel... If you don't have the uh, the depth of uh, players to come back in to replace them, you're going to pretty soon, it's like the sudden aurora going uphill or puffing Billy going up the hill in Belgrave. You're going to slow up. You're going to yeah. go from your 40k an hour to 20. Yep. This right. is what could happen to the Bulldogs. But they will win this game, but one goal and a half. So one drawing half an goal. analogy with the Western Bulldogs with puffing Billy. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, okay. Western Bulldogs, nine points for me. And uh, they're a dollar nine. I wouldn't be taking that sort of money, that's for sure. Next Brisbane Lions last week had a great win and, and stood up remarkably well okay. under pressure. Uh, Port Adelaide v Geelong at none other than Adelaide Oval. 7.45 tomorrow night there, $2.35. Uh, Port Adelaide, Geelong and $1.60 die over there. Port Adelaide in. Stewart and O'Shea out goes uh, Polek and Archie. They're dropped. And in for Geelong right to Kirsten McCarthy. Out goes Henderson managed. Murdoch and Lang. The managed Henderson is out to Troy. Yeah, Geelong have... Started the year in good form, and uh, Port Adelaide, wow, they, they've they been poor so far. So, look, it is at the Adelaide Oval, and they probably a two to three better, two to three goal better team at the Adelaide Oval, but I'm tipping Geelong in a very tight clash, one to two goals, Phil. Yeah, no, I think Geelong will win. I reckon they'll touch them up, five goals. Yeah, touch them up's the word, uh, Philip. Port Adelaide uh, at the moment, uh, I don't know what's happened to them, uh, whether they've got uh, psychological issues, whether they're carrying injured players or they just can't follow a game plan or whether or not it's the coach or whatever, but there's certainly something troubling that side to put in the insipid performance they put like in last week to get flogged by, issues. <laughs> flogged by 86 points and look like they were just going through the motions. They won't put two of those in a row. I, I, wouldn't, well, well, I wouldn't imagine. You wouldn't think so, but they're two and two for the year. They've been up and down like yo-yos so far. Geelong, to me, uh, turning into a hardened outfit uh, with a fairly good balanced side after they did that top-up recruiting with the uh, recyclables, as I call them, over the uh, summer break. Um, quality recyclables at that too, I might add on. And those players are playing very well for them. Although they're managing Henderson this week. They're managing him, Philip and Troy. They're putting him out there. Geelong by 10 goals. 10 goals on the Adelaide Oval. And next week, Koch, David Koch, if he didn't blow a... A boiler or a valve last week. He's going to blow everything this week, I'll tell you that. Right St Kilda playing GWS Giants at uh, Eddie Had on Sunday at 1.10pm. In for St Kilda at the moment in the extended bench team. Webster, Longer, Dunstan and Membray. Out goes Templeton. And for the GWS Giants in, uh, Devon Smith is a goal kicker. Jeremy Cameron's crucial. Uh, Haynes, Hopper. And out goes Tomlinson, the new boys, Jacob Hopper from North Ballarat, Troy. Yeah, the Saints, what a great... Performance. We've had a message from the floor. A message from the floor? Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> well, uh, well, we do. That's tough. <laughs> St Kilda. Well, two of us here do. <laughs> St Kilda very stiff last week. Yeah. Not to knock over the Hawks, but GWS absolutely pantsed Port Adelaide. Uh, so, so Troy, big call here. What yeah, I'm going the GWS. Really? 
Yeah, I expected f- him to do that. Of course he wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> By five to six goals. There you go. Of course he was because he rates Port Adelaide, you see, so he's got to say St. that. St Kilda will keep probably, you know, three three quarters. They'll keep keep and up. And then just fold up. Yeah, <laughs> fold up in the last quarter. <laughs> Which is, he's, he's talking, oh, well, he's talking no, about a carbon week. copy of the Port Adelaide well, game. No, next week. Round one. Oh, you know, oh. this is, you know, because he has to go like that because he reckons he's rating Somebody get this guy some Kleenex. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Please. <laughs> $2.45 and gee, the rest $1.55. So what, who, who are you picking? St Kilda by 10 points. I believe St Kilda can finally snaffle a victory. They've been working their guts out for the last Look, they're uh, not without a chance. Yeah, they're, well, of course they're not without a Absolutely chance. Absolutely not without a chance. I'm actually going to pick St Kilda, but not yeah. by a goal. Well, obviously, insanity is contagious, Phil. Yeah. <laughs> One thing you've got to remember if is... You, if you sit close enough to him, mate, that's why I'm a little bit... I'll tell you this right now. A little now. bit Tommy, further Tommy, away. Tommy Lee's come back from a massive layoff and had a good game against yeah. Hawthorne first up. Now he needs he was, to get back on the stage, no, Tommy well, Lee. He was he was you know on the cusp of being delisted at one stage. Yeah. He was brought over by Scott Waters from Claremont yeah. and he's, didn't quite fly out. He's he still pining two, for Pammy. He, yeah. he, don't look. You know we were trying to go forty-five minutes. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to. And he keeps throwing in this rubbish that I can't. Rubbish. What I'm saying. Move on. Tommy Lee. Just watch where you point that pen. He, he's Big come, guy he's coming through. Big and, guy. Yeah, that's all right. Shane Savage is a potential yeah. All Australian halfback flanker as we speak at the moment. Oh. He, Seb Ross, Joe Watson's cousin, is flying, and he's he's coming through. Is there through. anybody else in the St Kilda team who isn't? No, but I'm just picking out. I picked out three guys. Yeah. You know, that have improved. This is why St Kilda are on the Next up. Next week, we'll Ross, start Savage, with and, how and Lee. And, and and I'll tell you this, mate, and I'll give you the tip right now, Paddy McCann. I don't think we want to see him lose much of that weight because he can take big, strong pack marks. He can get off the ground and he's got Lockett-esque type qualities about him at this point in time. Type qualities. From Randall playing Carlton at the Subiaco on Sunday in an afternoon game that will end up in the twilight sphere. That's where you are, in the twilight zone. They're a dollar eleven from Handel. Carlton. I, just, I don't want the internet. Yeah. I don't really care. Okay, from Handel. Free Mantle Zach, by five. B great. Yeah, Clark, B. Gray and D. Tucker. Guess what? Oh, gee whiz, I can't believe it. Fremantle. Oh, they're playing. Who are Gray and Tucker? Tucker's first game, Gray's second game. Who says Ross Lyon doesn't play young players? You've got two in the one game. Well, after in, a 0-4 start, well. mm, yeah. you've got to start playing some news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In comes Jimerson. Good on you, Phil. Jimerson. Good on you. I haven't finished what you're doing. You don't care. We've run out of time. You have to care. What, what is the time? Well, if you, Mike, 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 who cares? If you'd hurry up and reading the teams out, we might get through this. 3.06 at the moment. We've got, I think we've got, uh, what have we got? We've got Come 10 on, minutes. Um, um, Shells, Car- but. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Carl Shells like Mork. Jemison, White and Jones. And my tip there from Adel, it'll be close game for a while from Adel by four goals. Right. As we get down to Melbourne v Richmond, oh. Melbourne, $2.15, yep. Richmond $1.70. And those odds are pathetically ludicrous. Uh, Melbourne, in comes Vince, Garlic, Garland, Neil Bullen and Petrarca for his first game. And great to see the yeah. young kid finally get there after doing his knee in the pre-season last year. Out goes uh, M. Jones with the soreness and C. Oliver, who was rested. And in for Richmond, Deledio, Maddox, they had to bring him in. Morris, Miles and Bachelor. Out goes Blaskrin with a leg and more. Miles plays his 50th game, Troy. Yeah, the Tigers to hit back. They've been under scrutiny. Yeah. They've been under the microscope. Wait for the next game. If Delidio plays, the Tigers by three to four. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm actually going to pick Melbourne. I think Melbourne are absolutely flying. They beat Collingwood. I think they're on a high. They'll be going out there, a bit like the next game we're going to discuss. Mm. The other team, the only reason they'll want to win is to stick it up. Yeah. And mm-hmm. put more pressure on the coach. Yeah. Is. So I think Melbourne will go out as hard as they can. And I reckon they'll win by four points. Melbourne by eight goals. I'll hold you to that. Melbourne, <laughs> Melbourne by, by eight, eight, eight goals. goals. Richmond you are, are you cooked. You are on drugs. Richmond are cooked and cooked again. They, uh, well, well, there's a perceived side. bias here, ladies and they're gentlemen. They're an ordinary side and uh, they've reached a plateau. A plateau of blandness, which they are finding very difficult. It will be impossible to shrug. They're going to have to now rebuild, I would say, we'll by the next week. few weeks. We will see. Richmond start by eight goals. Richmond, uh, I mean, you go Did you say the, Richmond by eight goals? I said Melbourne by eight goals. I thought you did. They've got yeah. two superstars in that side, and that's Alex Rance and Jack Revold, who can actually turn a game. 
Now, uh, you can Cochin and Deledio and Co can pick up a million possessions or whatever, but it doesn't seem to win Richmond games of football. No. So they've got two super. The rest of them are A minus two, C minus players. They ne just don't have yeah. enough top okay. edge at the top end. And they're going to get punished. Yeah, go. They're going to get punished by a team time. that's beautifully coached, disciplined, and on the way up, and they all believe in each other. Okay. Richmond go. don't believe in each other. And we've got another game coming up. We're going to say very similar things, Philip yeah, and Troy. Exactly. Collingwood the Eston and Anzac Day match there. Dollar forty Collingwood, Eston three dollars. Another ridiculous set of odds. In for Collingwood come Frost, Smith, Maynard, Cox. Out goes White. The new boy, Mason Cox. He's 25 years of age. He's from Oklahoma State University in the USA. Oh, wow. And that's great to see cross-pollination in sport. We love to see it, Philip. You yeah. love getting cross-pollination out on the radio and yeah. on the podcast. I do, actually. Explain it to the listeners what cross-pollination cross is. where you get a, a person who plays a sport in a specific country. And, and we're out of time. And very little uh, knowledge of a sport elsewhere. Wow. And then goes, leaves his place of home yep. and his university yep. or wherever he might be working and goes across the sea. Have you been a cross-pollinator in your, in your time? Uh, no, I haven't because I did I did football, cricket, athletics, and swimming, tennis, and golf, Troy. So that's not exactly cross pollination, is it? So you just lousy at all of those sports. I didn't play. Well, well, he goes to one question, and then he goes on to another one. So and then he makes a statement Excuse before me, I get Troy, a chance to answer who's the first win question. And by yeah, how yeah. Much? So uh, Troy. Yeah, yeah. Collingwood, Phil. Yeah, Collingwood. Yeah. Bye. Well, hang on. Uh, Essendon in Crowley, Dempsey, Simkin, and Grimley. Very strong boys out, Laverne with a shoulder, Philip. And yeah, we're getting a message from Cookie over there, the Bombers. He likes the Bombers. Yep. yep. Cookie's made more sense saying nothing and sending messages than the three of us have in the last hour. Um, I think it could be either a ding-dong game or... Denise Drysdale's turning up, is she? I'm actually going to pick Collingwood because if they lose, it'll just be an absolute catastrophe for what all do you think sundry. If they do lose. If mm. they lost, I, I couldn't imagine what would happen. Like Eddie will West go, Back Centre. the what West Back Centre will shut, there'll be a riot. A riot? Um, yeah, mm. I think it'll be a disaster. Mm. What'll happen to Buckley but, and Eddie? Will they, but Buckley yeah. would, Buckley would feeding him, he just might as well walk out. Oh, if they back. lose this, you they say they lose to Essendon, that's it, right? You reckon he's cooked? Oh, everyone will stop, stop sitting there. on the fence, Phil. So what you really mean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Look, that won't happen. He won't get pushed out. No, he won't, but after it'll just be for emotionally for the team, emotionally for the uh, well, supporters, happen, for everything. Yeah. Because at the start of the year, Essendon were gone, gone, gone. Never going to win a game. <laughs> well, they've already won yeah. one. Essendon have done well. Yeah, yeah. so... And if they beat Collingwood... Which they will. Right, I'll tell you. In my view. I reckon so, but I'm hoping that Collingwood will win, but only by two goals. It won't be a shellacking, which it should be. Should be. Troy? Yeah, the Magpies by four. By four goals. Essendon by five goals. Five oh, goals, Essendon. And five, Philip, how much are they going to win by? Cookie five. over... Cookie's happy? Oh, less and than they a win goal. by a point. Okay. Uh, You're reliving old... Old George times us, there, Philip Cookie. Philip Mance, I think, is telling us that if Collingwood lose, they're going to start to fester. I think is that what they're going to oh do. I tell you what, fester? there is a bit of Uncle Fester about you. All we need is a light bulb on top of his noggin. Have they got a fester? Oh, I'll tell you, it's, it's That's the problem. question for next week, is it, Philip? Yes. Yep, righto. Well, on behalf of Alan Mance Moulders, Footscray Melton and Bacchus Marsh, Liquid Black Coffee here in Middle Park, uh, Yellow Door in Elbert Park, Breakfast and Brunch Eatery, and none other than Ricardo's Trattoria, also in Elbert Park, with a big Sunday lunch and Monday can lunch for $29. Can we get free food there? Uh, at where? At Ricardo's. Well, you've got to be with me if you want a meal, if you want to get some advantages, uh, Philip, uh, that type. Dundison Fawcett. Well, yeah, Dundison Fawcett, Fawcett, where the stars align for fabulous food and wine. A great place to eat, right in the heart of Elbert Park. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Glad I the sport. Finished Volume 3, Volume 4, next Friday, same time, same station, same channel. Oh, just to remind them the address again if they want to come. Oh, and the address, if you wish to come and uh, view the show uh, while it's being made, 165 Ashworth Street, Middle Park, behind Beaconsfield Parade, easy to find in your Melways. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Josh? There are about 10 ads. Yeah, I think so.